find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, welcome to the Awesome Cast, the show where we get geeky, talk tech, social media, and more with the local nerds that use it live from Pittsburgh, PA. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. I forgot my, my Twitter name for a moment there. Uh, ready to come at you for this show. Back. Everybody's in studio this week. Oh, thanks for Ron Krause for f- filling in. Hey, Crazy Krause on the Twitters. Uh, I had a great talk about Microsoft last week. I think I'll appreciate uh, the little video I put up today I'll talk about a little later. But on the couch is... First of all, uh, the the camera move when I walked away. <laughs> What's going on here? I don't know. It's, it's so angled. You know, we're just going to do the canted Batman angle for this and just roll with it. Uh, we got, of course, John Chachilla on the couch. What's up? And Katie Dudas at K Dudders on the Twitters. Twitters. I the wait. <laughs> Hold on. There's your. There it is. I was gonna say, there where's is. the thing down well, there? You know, I, I got it. There, there they are. And I, I, I couldn't. I'm like, I'm looking. I'm like, did I name these right this time? Uh, That's not Katie. Let's. Oh, oh. Now I gotta turn them off for me, so I have an extra layer. I'm working on some new stuff with Wirecast here, guys. <laughs> Anyways, this is the Awesome Cast. Uh, you can join us here every Tuesday about 6.30, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. We start off at live.awesomecast.net. You can check out everything. Uh, ways to subscribe at awesomecast.net, including iTunes. Please rate us on iTunes. Uh, that's really important to a lot of places where we end up. Uh, so uh, uh, please, if you haven't yet, even just go down there. Uh, you know, Just put a star rating or something like that. Open up iTunes or if you have your on your phone or something. If you don't even use iTunes, we really appreciate that because um, it's a good central place to uh, uh, get those ratings through. Uh, you can also follow us at AwesomeCast on the Twitter. Right, Katie? You want to point at that right there? In the, there you go, on the video. Look, I've got it now. I can be a We're playing with that because uh, if you guys are on audio, we have this little bug in the corner for the Twitters. And uh, I, I was adjusting the camera. I was like right in the middle of her face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. Uh, you can also look up AwesomeCast on Facebook, Google+, and definitely subscribe to our YouTube. I started something today called, I'm calling the Tech Sec, the AwesomeCast Tech Sec. Um, it's a whole sector. More, I keep saying that. I realize how much of a bad name that might no, be. No, bad, bad. No, that's not. Mm. What? That's not good. <laughs> well, yeah, it could get interesting. It could get interesting. <laughs> Never know. You know, maybe we'll get some mishits hits and they'll discover it. You know, hey, discovery right there. Um, but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk. Actually, my awesome thing of the week I think is going to go along with that. Something I want to try to do here again. I've been doing the podcast uh, four days a week for 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 myself, and I have, I want to do these little bits for YouTube, and we're going to start that this week and see where it goes. Um, so let's get started with our awesome things of the week. Uh, geez, where do we start? Where do we start? Uh, Chilla, what do you got? Oh, yours is my favorite. What? My, oh, you want to start with favorite. mine? I could do mine. I want to start with yours. Okay, we'll start with mine. Because I, I was going to pick yours. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is the big news that I was excited about this morning to start off the first maiden voyage of the new, new cast. Um, one of all, you guys know we talked about many times Raspberry Pi on this show. Um, it's it's a small computer. I'll pull up some pictures here in a moment. Um, and uh, you know it's it, it's like it's like this big. Thank you're welcome, audio listeners. Um, <laughs> it has a couple USBs. It's, it's an Atom processor. You you basically run off of a a uh, SD card. Well, the big news. First of all, I got an upgrade uh, today where the 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 Model B. Um, is going to get a quad core processor and a, a, and I think double the RAM that it had before. So one, it's going to be a little more powerful for what it is. And also the big announcement that Windows 10 is going to be coming into this thing. It's going to be a free version of Windows 10 for Raspberry Pi. So it's going to be like the Atom version. I, I presume this is going to be similar to what we see on the um, uh, Surface RTs of the past that, that Chilla you've had in here. Um, so it's probably going to be like modern apps or something like that. Uh, but still, like the idea that for 35 bucks, more or less, you're going to be able to have a Windows computer coming up. I think it's going to run the... They're, they're touting a skew for Windows Internet of Things, which is kind of like a downtrim skew of mm-hmm. the Windows with Bing um, skew. But... They were joking on Windows <laughs> Weekly. Are we going to get a Windows 10 with Bing option here? Bing. Uh, I think the big thing is to to hit the Windows crowd, the gig of RAM. You're, you're, you were talking about the double the RAM. Mm-hmm. Um, the device, I would say, is probably, a, for you, you were kind of given the hand size, 
it, it looks to be a little bit bigger than a deck of cards. Right. Four USB I haven't ports. seen one in person yet. Yeah, I, I saw an older version of, I saw the A one, and a buddy of mine actually built an entire sound solution, because there's an audio jack on it, mm -hmm. and they have Wi-Fi, I think, built into I think it. Wi-Fi is built in, I think it has an <clears throat> Ethernet port as so, well. I'm trying to pull out the pictures from my story before, unfortunately, it's not happening So, so right he now. has all of these hooked up to speakers all over his house, including... Um, it is in, like behind his hot tub and he actually can control the sound all over the house with a small little app he made he's he's way too geeky but the small Jeez. little app he made it into a whole different <laughs> level here well imagine imagine sonos but instead of the speakers costing two three hundred dollars a piece you could reuse any speakers you have in your house and this 35 dollar little piece of equipment um I, I, I wonder if we're gonna if this is the beginning of the Windows is gonna make a comeback because it's gonna run on every dongle and stick that you can buy, or or this deck of card size device. Mm -hmm. um, to your point, I mean, we talked about the the um, Intel device that's just in the the almost like the Chromecast form factor mm -hmm. at the $175 price point. Now you have that price point down to 35. It's on. Yeah. This kind of killed Chromecast. that idea. And yeah. it, it's going to be a little more to it. Like to me, uh, and I, you know, this was kind of, you know, some conversation I had on the, the tech sack video today um, was, you know, well, I, I, I'm kind of wondering, can, can, you know, am I going to be able to get Skype on this? Am I going to get Google, Google hang up? It's going to have to be an arm modern version of both of those Skype. At least we know is in there. Maybe mm. I'll have to convert back to Skype for some of these things. And, and my idea of what could I could, I could do with this. And, and we looked, we kind of investigated this earlier about, can we get a Skype on raspberry Pi? And there was some Linux kind of modifications for something like that. But what I'm thinking about, if I can get a decent Linux on there, that'll run like, can't you get Ubuntu on it or something like that? I'm Oh, uh, yeah, you can definitely load up on I can it. do Google Hangouts there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got a, a video out, so a little bit of fandangling here in the studio. Like, I could get something. But even that, like, media server, uh, Basic Sickness uh, does the theme for our uh, wrestling shows. I was talking with him on Twitter today, and he was just like, dude, Media Center. I'm like, yeah, I'm, uh, a media computer. Just hook up to the back of your TV, you know? Think about, like, how people are buying Apple TVs clinging that like velcroing that thing to the back of their hd tv mm -hmm. that they're hanging on the wall and now that's just attached them to everything else you know i mean granted these when you get these things i finally got the pictures sorry this is taking forever to load um I, you, you know you get this thing and it's a bare computer you're gonna have to do something else with this it's a bare. Th this computer is one circuit board with all this stuff attached uh what it's saying that it's running an sd card so you're gonna have media i mean it's I gonna be a hard drive attached but still I thought they came in a 256 and 512 meg on board, and then everything else was expandable. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's this one is using micro SD. I think the old one used SD. Mm -hmm. But think about it. I mean, you throw a 64 gig card in there, and you got plenty of onboard space mm -hmm. for for a plenty of media and and anything. I, for anyone who travels, think about taking this with you and just plugging it into the TV at the hotel. Mm -hmm. And and you have, I'm sure, I, I've heard of people having like infrared controllers for them and stuff like that that are USB-based. I, I love the bulkiest thing on there is the Ethernet port. Uh -huh. Like that, that's the <laughs> thing that's like, man, that takes up a lot of space on there, you know? Like if it went Wi-Fi only, but you, you can't have just Wi-Fi only. You're, you have to have some kind of connection as a backup. Well, I, but I would think that the, so my argument to that would be, so you could put in two USB ports for the size of the, the Ethernet port. So we get six USBs? Put, put six USBs on there and let someone use a USB to Ethernet connector. Mm -hmm. I mean, why not? Hey, it works for Apple, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, as I'm sitting here with a MacBook that has a dongle for so I can get Ethernet down <laughs> here so we can do, do streaming and stuff. Um, I keep losing it every week because I just leave it down here now. I have such a <laughs> dongle problem. <laughs> you <laughs> lost your dongle. I, Hashtag dongle problem. Yes, exactly. 
Um, but no, I'm excited about this. I think it's going to be really, um, I want to say accessible. This isn't something you're going to buy your grandma and, and, and be like, look, you have windows for like nothing, you know? I mean, it's, it's, it's a hacker kind of thing. Oh, it's, definitely. It's a, it's a tweaker definitely. kind of thing. Yeah. And, and this thing was made to be a nice cheap computer that like schools can buy in bulk and be able to start teaching programming. You know, um, I mean, it was very like, I think they have, they have a version of their own kind of Linux OS for this, I believe like a Pi OS or, or something. Um, but other than that, I mean, there's plenty of modifications for different mm -hmm. kinds that you can put on here. Like we mentioned uh, Ubuntu, uh, stuff like that. Uh, it's a very, very undersized, overpowered kind of thing from, from the sounds of it. So, I mean, you're not going to be playing, you know, uh, 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 video games on this thing. You're not going to be playing Bioshock on this thing. But, I mean, you're going to get some computing done. But, you know what? I'm, I'd wonder how, how bad would the... Um xbox the the windows 10 xbox streaming mm -hmm. work or a steam or some kind of streaming service i mean i know a buddy of mine's running the nvidia shield i mean it's who says it can't be a, a video game machine but it's just streaming its source content from somewhere else right and how much how much of that device is like well it's a screen and a controller and all that it's mm -hmm. not just the computing power that's 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 you know sized down you know so um, but either way, I think it's going to be fun and see see what that's going to be like. I'm gonna, when Windows 10 comes out, I'm going to be looking at this. I'm going to be looking at HoloLens. I'm going to say, you know, hey, what, what can we do with this stuff? You know, and actually with this with this uh, more powerful version that just came out, Raspberry Pi, I'm I'm thinking just you know throw Ubuntu on it, see what we can do with it now. You know, for a little mm -hmm. bit of experimentation. That's like I'm, I'm looking to get in our webcam. I'm like that's the same price. <laughs> yeah, that's the ones bucks. we're using in here, you know. Um, they, I'll tell you what, if you check out Amazon too, and, and there's a bunch of different sites, I think even people on Etsy make enclosures for the thing. They do. They so do. there and there's so many cool looking ones that are that are retro. I've seen ones that look like old Nintendo cartridges. I've seen seen all kinds of different well, Raspberry actually, Pi cases. If so. I can jump ahead in our notes here, guys, I I, I kinda wanna stay on the Raspberry Pi uh, kind of idea. Katie, your brother actually uh, responded to the video I put up today about this. And uh, he says, one of the things you can do with Raspberry Pi, he gives me a link here, uh, just to note, this is a local Yinzer, Ryan Bates, and he was featured on LGR, which is a, uh, looks like a video game series on YouTube. Uh, so he's taken, uh, it looks like he's taken Raspberry Pis here, and he's making like mini arcade cabinets so you can run, uh, you know, you can run your games. You know, some some sweet little like tabletop ones like we've seen, you know, little ones that, that, that you stick an iPad in these days. Right. Um, but that's mostly always. And there, there's the Raspberry Pis. He's doing whatever modification uh, to get that on there. It looks like he's adding another board to it. Um, probably probably an interface for RPI arcade button shield. So that, that's actually the button interface uh, for the controllers mm -hmm. we're seeing there in this picture. Um, and that's it. You know, it's just interfaces. Um, I wonder what he's using for a monitor. So you actually like buy a full kit. It's a nine inch LCD. You buy a full kit and uh, and you put it together, and that's it. There's all the pieces right there. You know, uh, that's cool. That's real cool. I, I mean, I, I I used to investigate main cabinets. You know, mm -hmm. like what does it take to make my own cabinet? Like I, for a while, I would sit there with my dad, you know, saying, "Okay, can we really build this?" You know. You know, and, 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 and getting the plywood and, 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 and cutting it out. I just not, I'm not handy enough to get into that kind of stuff. So, <laughs> um, but oh, I uh, want one of these. I know. I kind of want one too now. <laughs> so, you know, I have a little desktop. Uh, 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 and I imagine it's just running MAME on, on, on Linux or something like that too. So, uh, well, and that's where I, I think if you look at like the all the different, because um, MAME's primarily the arcade game emulator, right? Right. So there's the then you have like the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo and all kinds of different stuff. Well, and, heck, you can do those in a browser on the uh, Internet Archive now. Right. So. so I mean, you could when you think about a quad core 900 megahertz. Is that right? Is it 900 megahertz? Get my gigahertz and megahertz is cross. Hmm. But but anyway, the speed there. I mean, you're running way faster than the PS One was. That's right. When you think about all those older or um video game consoles think of think of a the the av the maximum average game on a playstation one was probably 600 meg based on the fact that it used a cd rom mm -hmm. and you so so you start there and then work your way backwards i mean you're talking you could probably on a 64 gig sd card you could have every game from 
every game system from the PlayStation One and back. This this the the phone, the iPhone. <laughs> how many times I'm astonished when I'm playing a game um, that's at least PS2. You know how many of those things that they ported? Uh, mm-hmm. Grand Theft Auto Three through San Andreas are in these things and look better on my phone. Ridiculous, um, and, and that's what's happening here. Like you don't you don't need that much hardware for these kinds. Is of there? Things. Does the Raspberry Pi have Bluetooth? I'm guessing not. Mm. I mean, there's a Broadcom chipset. I, I can't find like a real good. Cross actually sent me one, and it's on my work computer. The spec sheet. Um, the, the but anyways, thanks, uh, Patrick Dudas for is it, what's his Twitter? Is it P P Dudders? P Dudders yeah. on the Twitters. If you want to go hit him up, like uh, thanks for thanks for uh, uh, sharing that with us. And they said that's a Pittsburgher. Oh, and you can check that out at retrobuiltgames.com uh, the, for those kits and and everything else he's offering over there. So real awesome. So Chilla, can we talk about your thing now? We can talk about my thing. Okay. My thing's not as cool as your thing. Okay. <laughs> So um, my thing is actually an app, and it's called ScreenFlow. And I didn't even realize, so Telestream makes ScreenFlow. And which they make is the Wirecast. Wirecast. <laughs> I'm very familiar with Telestream. <laughs> um, one of the big things I've used ScreenFlow for in the past, in past versions, is either, and it, its primary thing is taking screencasting and doing video um, work directly from your screen. Um, I've primarily used it to record like a, an iPad or, or something like that. Well, I think they realized, obviously, the people, the number of people that were using it to record iOS and different mobile device screens. Mm-hmm. So what they did is they added in a ton of plugins. Well, I don't even think they're plugins. A bunch of, like, tweening. So you can actually mimic, like, with two red dots on the screen, you can mimic pinch to zoom in your video. Because one of the one of the issues you that I've had is I've created I've created video for work and the the one main video I've created for work shows an iPhone screen and imagine like your your phone menu down at the bottom where you have dial pad contacts and everything like that and you have to drag across the bottom of the screen try illust- try talking someone through the fact that you have to drag something on the phone that doesn't look like it is draggable and to me it's, it has a lot to do with poor ui design but that's the big thing for me so you can you can kind of create the effect of two red dots android solves this problem by putting on a developer mode and actually putting white dots where your finger is tapping um but this is almost like a screen casting half screen casting half iMovie because mm-hmm. they have a lot of different effects the some of the stuff you're showing right now um, you can actually embed your yourself in the corner um, it, it does come in at a $99 price point but for everything I've seen it do it's 110% worth it um, I can't recommend the product so this is a if I need to do some like light video editing this is the way to go. Well, like, not only it's the light video editing, but it allows you to re- record your scre- your entire screen. Right, right. Associated audio and webcam. Okay. So if you wanted to do your own podcast and do yourself down in the corner in a small frame and all of your desktop screen behind you and just do just review stuff, um, that would be completely possible. Huh. And, and they're going over some of the tablet stuff now. Yeah, this I, I'm um, looking at this, and you know, I'm wondering if there's any correlation with this because I think the new Wirecast uh, they just upgraded, I think version of six uh, there. I think we're on five here, um, and we needed to upgrade because of uh, the versions. Like they weren't going to support the version of Mac that we were using. We're of course on Windows now. I'd rather be on that most recent one. Um, they were doing a lot with connecting with iPhones. Like I think you can stream maybe from an iPhone there, and they have Twitter, Twitter integration. It's not enough for me to justify the upgrade just yet uh, with what we do. Um, but but I think that's their, like, I think there's a general, Telestream is reaching out to all those things. Mm-hmm. You know? if, you, if you go to the main page there from the link and you, in, in the center where it has the bar, screen flow, what's new features, if you go to features and scroll down, um, the record everything section, the third one down, new iOS recordings, 
the one of the things is touch callouts that they talk about in there. So that video actually shows where you can pick you can pick your desktop, you can pick your video, you can you can actually record the screen right from your iPhone and then it shows the red dots and the pinch to zoom kind of panel. Um, do, do, do. So I see iOS. I'm having a hard time reading it. From okay. Here. And see the call out section. Oh, okay, I see. So click click on that call outs and, and kind of let that video play through. And that's where I'm talking about where once you get past their intro, the ability to show someone where you're tapping, right? It, it to me is is invaluable for showing demos. And where I think this is really going to come to to play. They they actually or are we going to see this get what we call Sherlocked and and Apple's going to take it and incorporate it? I, I'm amazed that something like this isn't already in Apple development tools. Because because one of the things is that Apple added the ability to put video in the App Store to to show off your app. Right. And you can do and na- so to to help with that they gave you in QuickTime for free. They gave you the ability to record the screen right. tethered. Now right. this goes above and beyond that. It says, okay, not only do we do a screen recording, but we can add you, and we can add where you're tapping, and we can add all this other information. Um, I just think it for any kind of tutorial, any kind of you're trying to show somebody something and they're just not is, grasping it. Like not just that. Like I, I am seriously considering recommending this for people that would need a little more serious than iMovie editor. Right. You know, like it's it that looks it looks like a pretty nice. Uh, interface for for something like that so uh, awesome uh telestream.net slash screenflow i think is your starting point here but uh, generally telestream.net and also that's where we have wirecast which is the software we use here for what we're doing the switches and the graphics and and this thing and and that thing and this desktop presenter and everything um a lot of really cool products over there flip for mac if you've tried ever been sent a wmv <laughs> that you were like why the hell can't i play this on my mac <laughs> you're familiar with these guys um, so yeah, but geez, we've been downloading that for years on the old, uh, on, cause everything was W, oh, we had to convert to WMV on Macs so they can use them in the plants. Back in the day. Back in the day. Back in the day. Back in the day, Flash. cause that's what they were doing. <laughs> we were, hey, I'm still, de- I'm still developing CD-ROMs on Windows 98 machines in 2010. Eh. I think it was still Windows 98 when I left in 2011. Um, anyways, Nutters, what do you got this week? First of all, hi, Wheels. <laughs> <laughs> I have something fun and exciting. Um, I'm not sure. I was not familiar with this at all. Um, there is a Lego renting company. Um, it's like a share play um, out in California. It's called Play, P-L-E-Y. And uh, what they're doing now is a play world where you take, well, essentially, let me explain play first. Um, you can rent essentially whole s- lego kits including some of the architecture kits um they they take them and you it's like a, i think it's 9.99 a month and you rent this kit for a month and then you send it back and then they sanitize it and then you can rent another kit so every month oh. it's so it's it's a very cool lego sharing system because so, uh, there's a lot of times where you want to buy a set but then what do you do with it when you're done especially you know when you're our age <laughs> has this been um did we talk about this before like i feel like there was something like this but it wasn't just Legos, like it was a general toys one. Yeah, or there was, was this. There was a different one before. Okay, so this is just Legos. This is just Legos. Okay, and now they've developed this thing called Play World, where you can take your own Lego designs, upload a photo, and if you get five thousand votes uh, likes on it, uh, they'll create this one for you, and other people will be able to to make the same set. They'll they'll come up. They'll make the kit with the uh, Legos and uh, um like a step by step instruction book, it's for your own designs. Hmm. So there's a whole bunch of different designs on there. Uh, so you can kind of be a master builder with logo Legos without having to actually be a master builder, which is really, really cool. And um, I guess that's really a fun set. Play makes and rents your design. Wow. Mm-hmm. So it's it's like it seems very uh, Lego maker. They're very community. they're very friendly with Lego. Mm-hmm. Play is very uh, they don't have any sort of thing to do with Lego, but Lego and them are very friendly and they kind of like the idea. And then plus you figure Lego probably gets a lot of ideas off this, too. Yeah. I mean, you have a whole board, essentially, of all these ideas that they may not have thought of. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff in that play world. It's like open sourcing Legos. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. So that's so play. So how many? So it's it's ten bucks a month. Mm-hmm. How many times can I ship back and forth throughout? The month? Is it like Netflix, so you can Is do it as like much Netflix, as you want. Netflix, you can yeah. do it as much as mm-hmm. you want. <sighs> 
I mean, if you look at the kits, there's like 250 sets. There's some serious. Oh, the Millennium like, Falcon. Yeah, because what do you? I mean. But you're like you you get it, you build it, and you send it back, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's the general idea. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. Well, the interesting thing is, you really want to play it. Lost a piece, we won't charge. So off of every kit, take one piece and then ship it back. And you can have your own whole Lego world. They have Psylocke from the X-Men. Pieces. Wow. Because they have a percent. They figure out a percentage of each There's kit. There's a DeLorean? Yeah. yeah so there's some of the architecture ones, too. This, this is crazy. Viper Class Defender. The, this is this is some... Yeah, these are uh, Sorg's looking at all the ones that people there's sent a, There's in, an submitted. Annie. There's a little orphan Annie one. <laughs> you can submit pretty much anything to this. And they did a real cool thing if you went to, uh, on the, I think it was on my play, uh, for Groundhog's Day, they made a little stop motion groundhog out of Lego that popped up from the ground and saw a shadow. Oh, their page is like a completely a Pinterest page and it's just going to go forever. Uh-huh. There's a blender! Yeah. <laughs> there's a KitchenAid branded <laughs> blender in this thing. Is it Wi-Fi enabled? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Yeah, I got a little bit of Mindstorm in there, right? Is there Mindstorm in this? I didn't see it. Well, I, I had to stop myself. <laughs> you kind of have to, right? Because <laughs> it just it keeps going, and it's awesome. So, so, so wow. Your dream is to be a Lego master builder, and you just can't quite swing it. That's awesome. Because, I mean, that's always been the worry for me. You know, we, we, we had this conversation about how, you know, you get the set. Right, mm-hmm. and you can't, it, you can't re- like even this is you're getting the set, and you get to put together the set, you get to follow the instructions. Mm-hmm. But I love that they're like, well, what can you make, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, that's that's pretty cool, that's really cool. Um, so that's that's playworld.com, p l e y, world.com, and of course the general service is so so, play.com is just the service, and the play world is the uh, oh, this is what everybody's made. Yeah, the play world is okay. the, is what people have made. Oh, I thought this. I, th- I thought I was looking at the catalog no. of things. I'm, I'm confusing the sites now. No, the uh, the play one, uh, P L E Y. Yeah, that's the one with all the site, the different. I mean, there's Star Wars branded. So this is where I go in and I can look at the sets that they have, mm-hmm. and I can see. What's Which is going also on. great for parents because you're spending Lego kits are 20, 30, 40 bucks oh, depending yeah. on what you're looking mm-hmm. at. Well, and, and kids only play. For I it think for in general, I think in general, like I I like the idea of the the, the toy one. You know, because it's like, well, the kids are going to play it for with, for a couple years. Um, we're getting in this this interesting thing where you don't own things. Nobody mm-hmm. wants to own things and amass things, you mm-hmm. know, and become, you know, it keeps people from becoming uh, pack rats, for mm-hmm. one thing. Uh, something I battle with. Um, <laughs> I got my He-Man toys in the closet over there, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I still have all my Star Wars stuff up in the air. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, well, you know, that's not bad, but um, it's still like. You don't need to keep everything. Well, you and know. I think environmentally wise, this is a great idea. I love anything that's a share. Because that's right. Because how many of this stuff, how much, how much of this stuff ends up in the trash? Mm-hmm. Like, don't go back to Goodwill. Don't go to the Toys for Tots. Or you can't even take the Toys for Tots, actually. Um, and and the, like, how many Legos are in landfills right now after all these years? You know, you know, mom threw out all the comic books. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you know th- those kinds of stories. And I, I think that's really great. I think it's a really great workaround for that kind of stuff. So play.com and playworld.com. Go check it out. It's awesome. So my, I just have one question. So if I go and get a play membership, oh, I guess you are getting like 200 and some pieces. Some of the some of the kits are bigger. I'm just thinking how easy is it to take? Because I remember having Legos, right? And you had like I had like four different kits and then you could kind of mix and match and you can mm-hmm. do all this extra right, right. stuff. If you're renting one kit at a time, how much can you really rebuild to then submit back to Playworld to try to get them to build or to, to offer your product? I, it, I think it, it's more of what you have at home. What you have at yeah. home and then at, okay. And then maybe not necessarily incorporating the sets in, but right. more just the separate. Now I want to go get Legos. I know. Sorry, I didn't mean to detract. That's all right. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Uh, and with that, uh, app of the week, Katie? Hi, ah, it's me again. Yes. Um, I believe it's is it stand up. Raise, yes. Stand raise, up. Sorry. <laughs> like, square dot com slash stand up. Um, I most of us uh, work around on our computer all day long and on our butts all day long, mm-hmm. and I forget to get up and move. And I went through <laughs> a ton of apps the last couple of days trying to find something that reminded me to get up and move. And there's a lot of exercise, there's a lot of yoga stretching, there's a lot of different 
apps with a lot of different things built into it. I like stand up. It's very basic. It's you set it um, from a certain time. Like if you you can set it to if you work nine to five, eight to six, whatever your schedule is, you can set this time range and it'll remind you every twenty five, whatever increment five up to I think like an hour and a half, two hours, whatever you'd like. Um, yeah, those two hours where it will tell you to stand up and uh, just says it gives you either your own prepared message like mine says get your butt up or <laughs> i love the wording on this so so there's a button so it pops up the screen i'm showing on here it says time to stand up and you have a button that says okay i'm up uh or can't right now and then it says i'm at lunch or something don't mug, bug me for and it has some minute intervals and in, in the rest of the day um so like they've, they've kind of thought about things a little bit it's also gps enabled Oh, if you are, so you if can I'm set standing it, here, if you're outside of your office, it won't bother you. Okay. Like if you're out doing something else, um, it won't, it won't tell you to stand up. It won't bug you about it. It makes the sound, um, and it, like I said, it pops up in the, the menu. But it also, um, you can change the sounds. You could buy sounds. You could change the color. It's very, it's a very, very simple, very clean app, which mm -hmm. I liked a lot. And mm -hmm. That's all I wanted it to do was something to tell me, just hey, why don't you go stand up for a second? Why don't you go for a walk around the office for a minute? But um, it's really, it's it's only, I think January came out. Mm -hmm. It's very new, but I, I like it. So uh, Get off your butt. It's in the iOS and... Uh, iOS right iOS now. Only. Just iOS yeah, right it's now? it's free in the iOS store right now. But Free in the iOS store. It's Stand Up. And the site is uh, raysquare.com mm -hmm. slash stand up if you want to check it out. I'm going to grab that right now. I, this is something I, I I kind of struggle with. So I, I don't know. I've been messaging. I have the exercise ball. Yeah. And then I, I actually put my loot crate boxes up and put my laptop on and on my desk. And that's a standing desk now. Unfortunately, I'm not always in my office. Uh, so so that's been kind of a kind of an issue too. So, but th 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 that's awesome. That's awesome. Definitely going to be uh, trying that here, uh, coming up. Guys, you like pizza, right? We all Who do. Who doesn't? I love pizza. Unless you're lactose intolerant. I'm sorry. But I'm sure they got something for you yeah. there. Too. They, they have gluten free and such like that. Our friends at Slice on Broadway, you can check them out at sliceonbroadway.com. Tell them the awesome cast sent you uh, because they are purveyors of wonderful pizza supporting podcasts in Pittsburgh. And, uh, and they're right here down the street, right on the tracks. If you're a commuter in the South Hills uh, and you're, you you see that that that, uh, that that sign, Slice on Broadway, before uh, the Broadway ends and you head on to the the, the, the the creepy streets of Dormont. <laughs> I don't know. You know who lives on creepy streets in Dormont? I Patrick do. Dudas. <laughs> Pete Utters. And, and, and Chilla. <laughs> I do. And Chilla. And Doug, and Doug Durda. And Doug oh, Durda. man, there's Should all I kinds of that, creepy people. Should I drink that dot com? Um, and, uh... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so it's on Broadway. It's not in Dormont. Um... <laughs> Uh, but no, check them out. They're there also on Main Street in Carnegie, PA. Great pizza uh, from scratch. The best stuff they can get their hands on to make it. They are uh, 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 they, they, they're, they're just obsessed with good pizza and really cool and really great to talk to on the phone. Uh, anytime I've called up every week here uh, for our, our, our pizza. So go f support them. Uh, there was actually, I had some... <laughs> Dutters, I did a bad thing. Oh no. I did, did a bad, do? bad thing. What did you do? I, uh, I yik yacked. Yes. I've been participating in Yik, yik Yak, and I'm, yes. I'm, we're, we're poking at this. Like, we're trying to figure out what do you do with this, right? Mm -hmm. if you, especially if you're trying to promote something or something. So I just started talking about pizza. <laughs> and I mentioned Slice on Broadway. And I got, I gave somebody the hot tip to ask for the Gonzo pizza. And then somebody responds, like, that's the best one and everything. <laughs> and, there was, and there was somebody, that, there was somebody random that says meat is evil and, and Jesus didn't eat meat or something um, like that. I, I really, okay, I'm really going to get my butt kicked for this one. Oh, no. But you know that person. Why? <laughs> and it wasn't me. But that person also thought you were somebody else. <laughs> but we're just having fun with it, you know? Yeah, so, uh, so this is what's happening on Yik Yak. If you are friends with us, we will pick you out and we will attack your posts. Because... <laughs> We are a secret army of. I think I, I think I just responded. Good for him, you know. <laughs> I actually used it to try to it's crowdsource. Amazing. I was I was in an airport and I couldn't find a coffee shop. Yeah, so I was, it's perfect, right? So yeah, and actually I got a bunch of responses back. Like mm -hmm. go to this, like concourse, or go here, go there. Wow! Like so, so I actually used it to crowdsource and try to find information. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes you don't want to be like, "Hey, I'm looking for such such in the city," and look like looking like an idiot on mm -hmm. Twitter, you know. Yeah. So it's an anonymous. It's like 
seriously, guys, where's the sex toy shop? <laughs> you know, or something like that. You'll get a legit answer, you know. Um, but this is not a Slice on Broadway commercial anymore. I just want to make that clear. <laughs> we moved <laughs> away from that. But, uh, but no, people were talking about that. And I think, uh, like, were you all of the responses? <laughs> no, I, I was not any of the responses. Were I heard about the responses. And this is just amazing because now neither person that was involved with that. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna but find it, all kinds of uses. But it was interesting because yeah. it's like, what do you do with that? You know, like I, I everybody talks about Chipotle. On yeah, there. there's a lot of talk of Chipotle, which makes me wonder if this planet or not, or if people are seriously just talking about Chipotle too. But if you're smart as a marketer, mm-hmm. and, and even you can just when you jump and peek into place. I'm oh, sorry, we're completely going on. This is Yik Yak Cast now. Um, <laughs> when you jump and peek in at like Disney World or something, mm-hmm. can you respond to? people Mm-mm. in disney world so you're blocked out from there yeah you can just look around yeah. so and i noticed you had, you can look you, but don't touch you had an experience this week yeah my my yik yak experience um i there was always the question of whether yik yak it is truly anonymous and it's truly just gps based and i have oh my gosh my yak karma is almost 700 which is nowhere near as good as a lot of my friends who hit thousands uh, but I was at home and I picked up Yik Yak and it was like, you are too close to a school. You have to be 18 or over. And it blocked me from participating in Yik Yak at all. That's how it, yeah, I'm near an elementary school up there. So they thought I was in. So you can't do it at home. Well, I had certain parts of the house. If I just oh. take a few steps back, <laughs> okay, it's <laughs> oh, really weird. So, so the GPS is weird on phones. Like sometimes yeah. it'll bounce you, mm-hmm. you know, a little bit, especially where you are up in the hill and mm-hmm. all those houses. I'm sure it does it all the time. Yeah, I want to be like, can you look at my yak karma? Really, I'm an adult. But um, yeah, it thought I was too close to the school, so I was underage, and it blocked me from. Well, it's also it. like you could be near a school using a yak to do stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that, that's understandable, I think, and it really is mm-hmm. kind of aimed at college. College Yik Yak has followed like half of our accounts. Hmm. Like not not this like I, I'm sure they followed this one too, but mm-hmm. not ones that we have been talking about Yik Yak on, which is really interesting. <laughs> huh. Like, listen, no, we're over here talking about Yik Yak. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah. It's it's weird. And I apologize. Is there an Android version of Yik Yak? Yes. Yes. So what would be interesting is on Android if you go into the About this device in Settings, mm-hmm. and you go down. And you tap 10 times on the OS version. I think it's the OS version number on the the number uh, on Android. It unhides the developer menu. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the developer menus is allows you to actually change your GPS information on the device itself. So So you could yik yak anywhere. It, well, I, I wonder if that would break it. Like, I, I wonder if it would just kind of stop working at that point. I don't know. Because I feel like it was like, I don't know where you're at. Uh, but no, it, it, it what it is is it overrides the device's GPS and allows oh, you to so mimic it, the GPS of so anywhere. It, it wouldn't even Coordinates. see. It wouldn't even see at that point. It would No, it, it would, should see your wherever you tell it you are. Huh. I'm going to try this at home. Mm-hmm. I don't have an Android We're going to hack the Yik Yak. Oh, I love wait, this. this. I love this. So go into settings. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you play with that. Well, let's talk about drones a little bit. Of course, there's a little bit of drone news, national security drone news uh, last week when they, a, a drunken government employee drove a drone into the White House lawn, um, which has raised a whole ton of questions about, uh, uh, about what they can do with it. Um, but this has been one solution. So, some of the manufacturers are, uh, have GPS in the drones, and uh, a few of them, I don't know why, what the heck? I click on this story, and I keep getting the stand-up app. I don't know what's going on here. Oh, there we, there we go. Um, but one of the drone makers is setting their, their GPS so it doesn't work in the uh, downtown area of Washington, D.C., um, which is an interesting solution. I, those guys are still working on the yeah, yeah thing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> going away we, we found the allow mock locations, but I don't know how to actually then set the location. Probably because it's a Samsung. We found that we found the debug menu. Yeah. Which, which I didn't realize that was I thought that was a Samsung thing and it's actually all Android devices now. Mm-hmm. But anyway, sorry. Go back to your drones. Go back to the drones. Anyways, the drones. So Send so, in the drones. so they're they're they're, they're oh, updating <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> they're updating the firmware so uh, so that so that they they can't fly like the drone will basically just shut down if it's in you know near the White House or something like that. Um, 
Do you think that'll actually work? I think it's just going to get hacked and they're going to turn it off, <laughs> exactly. to be honest. I, if, it, if somebody really wants to. Or they'll just buy a drone that doesn't have this. Right? Well, and, you, and like from what I've been hearing and the more and more I hear about like Twit, different different shows on Twit and different people talking about it, everyone is saying go buy a cheap drone. Right. So I'm guessing the, the, the cheap, cheap drones, drones not gonna aren't going to have this. It's not going to matter. Because and then everybody's saying is go buy a cheap drone so you can learn how to fly one and then build one yourself. Right. Because those those that's the best way to to, to, to understand to it. understand everything. So who is actually going to get a drone that has one of these chips? I don't know. Or is it going to be like Thudders and it's going to say you it's going to say you can't fly this because you're too close to the White House and you're it's just because you're <laughs> well there goes that that <laughs> apartment <laughs> right um, I don't know it, it's you know they have to do something especially officially there's a no fly zone over Washington D.C. period right um, but how you is that FAA these, but uh, yeah it's FAA I believe that's FAA so did you hear about the 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 guy that there was the no fly FAA um, alert in Hawaii when Obama was there and the guy was on the beach and went over to the cop and said can I fly my drone here and mm-hmm. he's like yeah why and he said well the FAA has a, has a, everything under no fly right now and he's like the FAA it's not like they they don't it's, have any jurisdiction that's, really <laughs> that, that's right like, what was the, the we, we listened to the I same podcast yeah. and like it was like it was like yeah they're not an enforceable entity yeah which they're not you know, uh, you take away a license or something, you can't fly your commercial aircraft, right? But, but you can't. You there's no there's no license. That's going to be the next thing. You know, there's going to be a drone license or something, right? Right. Which but, uh, flying drones is a privilege, not a right. <laughs> it makes sense because I mean, this is something, and that was one of the conversations. I think you know, again, let's listening to the same podcast. Uh, this thing can hurt somebody, you know. In a lot of cases, they, they, <laughs> book your eye. <laughs> well, these are he- this heavy machinery, you know, and it's flying or falling from who knows what height or what speed. I um, mean, it, it is dangerous. Um, but I don't know. The FAA is really kind of sitting on their hands on this until they have to. So uh, we'll see whenever that happens, I guess. So, hey, some good Pittsburgh news that didn't happen in Pittsburgh. Uh, do, are you guys familiar with the Inscam? I am not. And I, I'm trying to figure out what it is. Um, it's okay. I, I've actually, this, this person's not new to me. Um, I've actually seen her speak at uh, Refresh Pittsburgh, who, by the way, are having a meeting with friend of the show, Josh Sager, uh, this Thursday. Go refreshpittsburgh.org.com, something like that. Um, and she also spoke about this at PodCamp as well several years ago. I think way back when we were still at AIP. Um, I do remember that, but I... So, so, so... Yinscam started as it's an application that you can download and it runs on the Wi-Fi in the arena. You know, start with the penguins. That's why it's Yinscam, mm-hmm. right? Um, and you get like access to all the cameras and special information. You can pull up, you know, any of the cameras in the arena and you have that information. So apparently they were at the Super Bowl. Um, they, I started seeing some pictures uh, uh, pop up on my stream about this and started following it a little bit, uh, some of the responses. And, and uh, they were definitely representing at, at Super Bowl 49 over this weekend. Uh, oh, geez, I'm going to butcher this. I'm so sorry. Priya Narasimhan uh, of Yin's Cam. Uh, she's a wonderful lady. I've seen her talk to, talk to her a couple of times. Uh, I have no idea. I'm sorry if I pronounce your name. Uh, but no, they were. Uh, it was really cool. I guess ev- there was like pictures and everything of the flyers. And here's a little bit of uh, what I presume is the interface uh, that they're sharing on Twitter on how it looks. It had, uh, you know, your uh, information. You had your different cameras. Um, you, you see a, a, a picker screen over here for the 50 yard line, the north end zone. Uh, the south end zone, the sky cam, and these are all like pictures uh, live from it. They were they're pulling up. I guess they were getting Super Bowl commercials, like in the stadium off of this. So like mm. you weren't out on that experience uh, of watching at home in that case. So uh, really cool to see Pittsburgh really representing. Um, again, Yin's cam was at Pittsburgh. It was it was at the Super Bowl, even if the Steelers were not. You know, <laughs> I mean that's you know that that that's awesome that we're still representing. So your, does the stadium or the the stadium has to subscribe to be allowed to then have the feed. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, because like I, I know when they were talking, like several teams in 
NHL, NBA, NFL now, um, I think maybe some MLB uh, now have this. And this is something where okay. I, I think like they have to they have to install something there, I'm sure, some kind of server to mm-hmm. interface with all the cameras, with everything else in in there, make sure the Wi Fi is up to snuff for everything, uh, uh, to get all this to work. I mean you're streaming video to how many thousands of people that actually download and use this thing at, at a time. Um, but you know, for the super like you know, we're talking like I mean, one of the things they were pitching when they first talked about this was, okay, it's uh, between periods. You got 20 minutes to kill. Mm-hmm. You can go through and check out some of the replays. You know, it's a really cool way to to kind of get people more immersed in the game when they're sitting in the seat, as opposed to like again that presentation we're used to uh, on television. You know, and another reason to use that phone, and hey, another reason to serve ads to your phone. To be honest, you know, in the end, I mean, I'm seeing Verizon all over this thing from the screenshots that we're seeing here on their Twitter account. Um, so it's at Ian's can on Twitter. If you want to check out more about it there, what would be uh, great is instance. if you could subscribe to Yin's cam unlimited and for all the cord cutters out there, get it at home. They can get any, any stadium enabled Yin's cam location. Oh, that'd be amazing. I'd, can... I'd pay for that to watch Penn's games. Mm hmm. Awesome. But I think for the most part, it's a play of, is it is an in stadium play? Yeah. You know, it's definitely a, a in stadium play from, from what I'm seeing. But um, but no, really cool technology. It started right here, and now it's everywhere. Like I think they had like some soccer stadiums even too, that they were working with. So awesome. Uh, Google now pulls data from your favorite apps. This makes me nervous. It makes you nervous. <laughs> They're opening the floodgates because because Google already knows about you and has been telling you how much they know about you with a with a Google now. Are you are you worried they're gonna they're gonna share your Pandora playlist with me? No. What. How are they actually? So you do you approve them to have the access to the content? It's one of those line items when you install a thing that you always yeah, ignore. Yeah, and see, <laughs> that's where like, I'm sorry, like I'm glad that this that my Twitter app can't talk to Facebook, mm-hmm. and my Facebook can't talk to Twitter because there may be things I don't want Facebook to post or to see you on Twitter and vice versa. I mean, if I wanted them to have access to it, if I can grant them access Mm. one at a time, but I don't know if I want Google now having access to my entire, well, I don't know if I want Google period having access to everything I do. Well, is it, is it, so is it, is it really like calling up to the server when it sends this information, or you know, like your stuff in Google Now does, or is it simply just drawing that information on your phone from I don't know what were some of the samples that gave here for applications? A- Airbnb, Lyft, Airbnb, the Lyft, Guardian, something and like that. eBay, like, Walgreens, Ford, Waze. <laughs> I mean, there's some major Zillow, Hootsuite. Yeah. So pretty much every aspect of your life. <laughs> Every app you use, basically. Mm-hmm. I understand them scanning my email and saying, you know, your package arrived or you have a flight next amount of time and it's going to take you this long to get there. I understand that because they are Google and they house your mail. I don't like the fact that they're now going to aggregate. So so let's just say this. So let's say I use. And, and this is this is where I think they're going. Let's say I use my Gmail account only for my Google services and all Mm -hmm. my other services are under some other email account. They're now, and because all the notifications would normally go to that email account, they're now, they're now privileged to scrape all that extra data. So you're, you're, the concept of it, if you wanted to segregate off so Google couldn't read that, guess what? Now they can't. That's where, yeah. That's yeah, you, just, where you just open that up. I'm, I'm not 100% And, and I got to think, like, like I think these apps are also, like, the people, the, the companies behind these apps are also concerned with that, too. Where's the walled garden on that? Mm-hmm. You know, are they saying, um, what was the one thing? There was an argument a few, few, week, few years ago where newspapers and magazines wanted the subscriber list from Apple subscriptions, and they weren't giving it to them. So what is the information sharing agreement here, right? Mm-hmm. What, you know, because I can't imagine some of these, like, 
especially ones like uh, Trip and the hotel ones and, and some of these uh, orbits, you know, there's already trouble about uh, Google grazing some of the public information there, right? And, and do they really want to give up that customer information for Google to use for their purposes as well? well and do you want ads for every playlist that you have in Pandora? Like, do you want ads served up to you in Chrome? based on your Pandora playlist on your mobile device? But don't we already do that? I mean, isn't, isn't that with, like, how many other services that, that cross talk and how many of those are based on... Um, do What do I get ads from when I'm using... I, when I see an iAd in, on my phone, you know? What user information is going into that from other, other services, other apps? Do they get to see the other apps I use and be able to kind of direct I don't that? know if they get a lot of that insight. Mm. But here, okay, so let's say this then. Do you want? Do you want Chrome? I'm. Get, do you use Chrome all the time for everything? For the most I part, use, yeah. Okay. See, I don't use Chrome for that reason. So to me, I feel like it's. I'm going to get ads now, based on what I purposely went into another browser to browse because I didn't want ads over here. You're, based you're, on you're, that. You just got drawn into the informational quagmire you didn't want into yes like okay. I, like i i enjoy the opt-in mentality don't that's the interesting one the walgreens one so yeah well, because then you're running into hipaa potential yes. hipaa issues yes and into it like the mint isn't that a that's where i wonder personal finance? that's where i'm wondering so i'm wondering you know hey your prescription is ready Okay. Um, yeah, you're getting Gmail. You're getting Google updates. <laughs> hey, Gmail. But then again, I, I mean, I'm set up on auto refills on mine with Rite Aid, and I get a call and an email. Actually, mm -hmm. my wife gets the call because her number's on the account <laughs> for some reason. Um, but, uh, you know, it's still, <laughs> she's like, hey, your prescriptions, and they just call me. It's like, why am I not getting this? You know? <laughs> so, so Mint does your credit score. Right. Which usually when like when I get credit because I get a monthly credit score report, but they also but really, it's a lot. What is the difference? What is the difference between that and those, Mint gives me a bunch of information in email form in my Gmail that they have access See, to. See, my my stuff does not give me my stuff says your credit score is ready. Click here to log in. Okay, like that's where I don't. I don't know. Maybe I'm paranoid and Skynet. They're gonna know groceries real, I'm getting. And I got to know how I'm eating. <laughs> then they're going to say, hey, Walgreens, maybe we should suggest some stuff for her. <laughs> so I guess it gets to the point where if you wanted to do something privately, how do you do it now? If you don't, and, and here. Well, you let, don't let, use Google. One thing. <laughs> I don't use Google. It's kind of, it's kind of my thing. <laughs> it's like, I, I want to be private. Why are you using Google in a free thing? You should pay for something that at least promises and gives the air of privacy let's i mean let's be honest what is actually right, not actually, hackable but, these right. days but to me it's just way too it, it starts it starts going down that like if i really want to be safe from things i need to throw my phone away and hide my money under my mattress right. you know i mean that's like do you want to be part of this world or don't you and and <laughs> not my bitcoins <laughs> it's your bitcoins but no i, I there, there has to be some kind of wall there and, and we'll probably learn about that and considering how many partners they have they can't be just giving up all this information but i know what my family is <laughs> but well, i mean family tree look at family locator <laughs> look at the degrees microsoft went to with cortana and the localization of information on the device and it right. doesn't it well google doesn't worry about that right like and that's another reason for you, Chilla, to pick Cortana and a Microsoft phone over a Google phone in your iPhone. <laughs> well, no, I would run. rather have my iPhone than... Mm -hmm. I, mean, I would probably... I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I mean, yes, I have an Android device. And yes, it has stuff that I use for work to test. Mm -hmm. But it's not my daily driver. And that's quasi one of their reasons. Mm -hmm. hey, tell me, you know, hey, here's another local story. Um, and I think you, one of you guys put this in here. Uber and CMU announced a strategic partnership in Advanced Technology Center. Yeah, um, trying to fight Google. I heard about this. <laughs> Uber's, Uber's like, I'll show up on your home turf and take your CMU people. Well, here's the other thing. Uh, well, okay, first, explain explain what they're doing here. Oh, gosh. I. <laughs> you, just, or you just walked away from it. I just, I just put the thing down. Um, well, basically, they're, they're, they're partnering to do automated cars. Yes. Right? They, it's all self-driving vehicles. Who's going to get there first? Yeah. And who's going to... 
that's it pretty much good and and they're just trying to compete with google which is just interesting that uber has made this much money you know what makes it even more interesting mm-hmm. uber was financed by google dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. and now they're competing with each other on on automated cars com- potentially here in the future mm-hmm. um so that's that's really interesting um we're just gonna cut out someone it was interesting someone brought up um this the self-driving vehicles how great of a city pittsburgh would be for testing because of the hills and the roads and <laughs> everybody's gonna die i don't know <laughs> yeah. you know this is not where you start for testing yeah, it was is, all sarcasm we should buddy. be the last ones they, they they put it because like if it's I thought gonna... that's why they picked nevada because there was a bunch of desert right right <laughs> you're not going mm-hmm. to like Jeez, that's okay. How many maps say this road connects over here? <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, it does not connect over here. And my automated car is going to tell me I can just go across Ooh. that chasm? No. Because mm-hmm. I'm on a dead end road. Like the, the road I'm on, if you look up, my address is probably Pulasco Avenue in Beachview. Um, like you follow the road, and then sometimes it steps. And then sometimes it keeps going, and then it stops, and then it keeps going after like another road that's like below down the hill Mm -hmm. you know and then like it's a dead end at several points along quote the road and i'm worried an automated car is not going to realize that i mean how many times in this city a street is really just steps like your neighborhood especially Mm -hmm. mount washington yes i i had a friend that lived uh not uh off of warrington a bit there like towards your direction and it was so confusing because you just see a street sign no reason for the street sign there's no cross street nothing there's just a street sign and you're like what is this and there's apparently steps over there or there used to be or something like that or a walkway that had a name you know um yeah i don't want automated cars to be here yet. Yeah, so this is <laughs> it's a not bad happening application for that mm-hmm. no 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 i mean it'd be no it'd be great to you know see what goes wrong you know but no no, no. you, you got to be a nice flat something without the difficulties that we have around here for for certain but cmu getting involved that's awesome that's well awesome. it was funny because someone I, I usually don't read the comments on these kind of articles because we all know about reading the com- comments but oh, someone yeah. brought up the point they're like i expect ads during the ride to reduce the cost in a netflix life like monthly fee <laughs> for the rides <laughs> yeah yeah it could be it could be yeah i was um, like yeah. <laughs> that's an interesting way i always hear good things I, I know some friends use uber and lyft i actually know uh oh i forget what service is on somebody that i work with is now a driver for one of the services mm. and he says it's pretty fantastic oh he got dinged because he didn't have the holder for his phone yet because uh, you know you can rate people on there so um hey we actually have i want to see if i get these right we actually have a submission for an awesome thing of the week from alex cars in the chat room our friend speaking of california i'm sure he's run into or maybe been running to buy a smart car or two um (laughs) but uh he has some audio applications for the ipad and the iphone first of all uh and here's what he's saying in the chat up here uh but uh here's the first one oxy a-u-x-y dot c-o and just the oxy is the um is the uh the app you can look up on the ipad it's awesome, th- awesome things of the week are oxy and keezy um music making simplified for instance um and i like this i haven't really looked into this for a while um but yeah it's, it's a really quick uh kind of uh touch interface music making uh software um this is the ipad one is the oxy it looks like uh, looks really cool. Uh, and the Keezy one, K-E-E-Z-Y dot C-O, if you want to check that out. They have a couple. They got they got Keezy and they got Drummer. Uh, play with music and make beats in second is the other one. And now I'm downloading it from the App Store. Um, so, so check those out real quick um, from Alex Cars in the chat room. By the way, Wheel says he's been enjoying, enjoying uh, Yik Yak. And uh, Cal U <laughs> students entertain him. I couldn't, I couldn't imagine what Cal U would be like down there. Man. Anyways, uh, anything else we want to touch on before we get out of here? The, the last entry. So this this is something that kind of resonated with me after talking to different family members over the holidays and different people saying, you know, my wireless isn't that great over. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, isn't this gr- isn't gr- that great in this section of the house or i know i have a problem and i've also getting... i've also myself had to set up like an extender for a client yeah uh, for their big house so this product's called the i think it's called the eero i guess is the 
B E R O. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty much a device that combines the function of a router, a range extender, and, and a repeater all into a single device. And if, if you merely have two devices on the same network, they automatically figure out which one should be doing what, and then they kind of become that. So this is the explanation I got on this today from, from one of my new shows was you get the you get you get this thing. You, you set it up, you, you connect it to your router or whatever, right? And mm -hmm. you actually walk around with an iPhone app that measures your reception okay and helps you pick where to put the second where one the second where to put the third one or something like that that's kind of nice that's really it nice. starts at 130 dollars for one of them but i can't see much use in using just one um and but you can get a three pack for 300 dollars. Mm -hmm. so you save save a couple bucks which there. i mean i'm always i'm always touting apple because their devices are so easy to configure and so easy to use well Go get three airports, and try to re try to try to do what this company's doing. Mm -hmm. Like, there's all kinds of extra settings that you need to know about on the air on the Apple Airport to actually. Because what I did was, is I wanted the second device to repeat Wi-Fi, but I wanted it to grab it from the wired port off of another airport and then i have another airport even further away that i want to wirelessly repeat the signal so uh, and, uh, and that's, that's the thing not an easy none of these tasks are easy apple devices are are always really good is like i can do a b and good luck with c right you know um and that yeah that, the wi-fi is trouble enough to begin with um i'm looking at myself at, at trying to get something uh, uh get a wire sent in here you know it's just i have too many things on wi-fi's you know, and and, and I, I think the problem is I just need to split those on different. Like, let's put the TV stuff over here. So then you need the five here. gigahertz, and you need the two point four gigahertz. I guess I do, don't I? And... Because they, they need to not interfere now. So that's what that I was, started. That to was do. an interesting conversation today on Cord Killers. Was um, one well, of the Cord Killers. Thanks for uh, uh, soon having our friend of uh, Rambling Movie Minute on in a future episode. Oh really? Yeah, we got got started talking with them on Twitter this week. Um, Malengo or Malongo, as they've been calling him <laughs> since they before they watched our show. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, they were they're kind of saying like they thought they had, like because you know those guys have like oh well, I have this, I have a Chromecast, I have a stick, I have a PlayStation, I have this, and realizing how much that was interfering and canceling each other out, and they were having problems. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if that's some of my problem too, because I got. Well, the Xbox is off most of the time, but I got the Chromecast and I got the Fire TV stick that are like, you know, right next to each other. Eh, kind of close enough. The ones on the side. Well, the other thing, though, is that obviously in that spectrum, you only have so much stuff that can pass through it at a single given point. Right. Time. And I think that's and then I'm that's sitting there where... trying to do upload a YouTube video four YouTube right. videos at a time on my laptop. It's like, ah, you, we got to do something. So what I started doing was anything that I wanted to be like the highest priority, I put on the five gigahertz network. Mm -hmm. So like, e not even all my devices are on the five gigahertz network. Only a subset of them are, and then the remaining devices and Carla's devices are on. I haven't even looked at gigahertz. gigahertz. I just have router down here. I have a router right here behind this computer. Like that's for here in the studio, and it's a backup one too. Mm -hmm. You know, if I was like, ah, oh, let's uh, this is less important. Let's put on like the Wii won't work on my. Verizon router. It hmm. has to work on here. It's really slow when I try to do uh, the Roku uh, that, that Brian gave me. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a generation one one. It will not work on my Verizon router. It didn't for the longest time. I didn't use it. Started working on this one, but I have it up in the <laughs> office on the second floor, so it's not going to work too well, you mm -hmm. know? Um, thankfully, I have stacks of ipads apparently uh but it's but no i think this device this is, this is in pre-order right now if you want to check it out um and it's the e-e-r-o-s eros uh do they have a site for this guy they do because pre-orders are open they, where they, did that tab go um, everybody's talked about it, but they don't talk about where to get oh yeah, just e -E -R -O -O. com. that would make sense wouldn't it mm -hmm. i guess so uh, go check that i think that's a really cool solution for something like this um, if it works as advertised and it's that easy to to kind of set up, cool, you know, more great. That that's that that's Please. the big thing for me because that's the other thing is like people ask you about range extender, and it's well, what's going to be the easiest setup for you? So the first question that's is, well, what kind of wireless router do you have now? That's what I was wondering because I'm like because <laughs> I was like my first question is like, listen, I found these ones, 
but I don't know what you have. I can't like yeah. and it's and well again, I think they have the Verizon action tech whatever. Mm-hmm. Um and it's like I don't want to buy one of these or tell you to buy one of these or have you go to Best Buy and buy one. And for some reason, this is not compatible. Work. And uh, I mean, as it was, I, mean, I had a heck of a time. I ended up having to plug the, the thing in instead of doing the Wi-Fi repeating uh, in the long run. But I don't know. <sighs> I want to touch on this one because I don't I'm hoping you guys can explain it to me because I heard it and I, it, it didn't catch it. So Twitter is going to do third party promoted tweets through flipboard is that right yes it's this is the first time they're venturing into third parties so this is kind of open the floodgates because i think a lot of people who do a lot of third party uh, twitter instead of using the native because they don't want the promoted tweets and now these promoted tweets will be everywhere okay so you can't ex- it's essentially it's something for so, the advertisers see, no 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 i've already been getting this because oddly the thing i pay for mm-hmm. hootsuite has had promoted tweets before even twitter did so this is their well, just, Twitter wasn't making money off of those yeah. third party. Tweets. No, actually, actually, I think th- I know. No, actually, I think it was who's or I think it was like a like they were like a pilot okay. kind of for promoted tweets, mm-hmm. which is really weird. Um, so now I can't get away from it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Not that I, I mean, I use mostly I use TweetDeck and, and Hootsuite and that's it anyway. So I'm used to it by now. Mm-hmm. But um, but now Flipboard, you can't get away from it now mm-hmm. and, or anything like that. I always like Flipboard. I, I got away from it because I just thought, um, uh, what is it? Jeez, I can't remember the one I use. It's right here. Uh, that replacement when reader shut down. Feedly. Uh, I really mm-hmm. think Feedly kind of, it's not as elegant on an iPad. Mm-hmm. But it mostly works as in it organizes things. Um, I feel like I feel like Flipboard. I I, I feel like we got into early, right? Because we were trying to play around with it for the show too. And right. I, I feel like they're like, now, oh, you can make your own magazine. Oh, now, but it really doesn't work doing all that good well. as in it comes on. Don't they come on like Samsung devices or something? Come, yeah. Well, and that's where I think that over time they've gotten they released things to the public way too early that didn't work properly. Right. But now I think they've had enough time to kind of let that let those fully bake mm-hmm. and everything's working well for them. If you were just a Flipboard user that wanted it, wanted you wanted it to curate for you based on a, a handful of of sources, I think it was good. Mm-hmm. If you wanted to try to bend it to do your bidding for everything, I don't think it was like I said fully baked at the time and I think it's come a long 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 way and I'm actually going to give it a second chance because might be the time for it yeah because it, it wasn't it wasn't ready for prime time for all the stuff they were touting a year ago or a year and a half ago hey look there it's on my uh cover story mm. <laughs> flip is on, <laughs> flip is listening to us <laughs> you know what it is is the google now is listening to us and they shipped off your information to flipboard yep there it is there you go there you go all right guys well hey there's a lot of stuff coming up um i have noticed uh you know there's a wordpress meetup group that meets at uh, uh, at eden park i think over at waterworks hmm. um you can check that out look up the word uh here I'll, I'll pull up the information but if you're interested in that thursday night this week wordpress backups and security pittsburgh wordpress developers and designers i think if i didn't have something else i wanted to attend i, I kind of want to drop in you'll know, see what what these wordpress guys are doing you know uh but uh go check them out there if you look up pittsburgh uh, beatup.com uh you, you can find that um group uh it might be good for you uh the, the, the refresh pittsburgh um i mentioned that before at refresh pit on twitter uh they had a presentation uh, where our friend Josh Sager is actually, oh, there's my notes, uh, is actually, uh, 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 he's got, he, I, 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 I listened to, well, he's always a great guy to, to talk to about design and everything like that. The thing, I saw him teach when, when I was training at PTI uh, for my adjunct stuff over there. And the dude is like the best design teacher, I, I, I think, out there. Um, but uh, he's going to be doing one on project management. Um, and there's a, another speaker. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but they were really good too. But they, they actually got delayed until this Thursday. So check that out, Refresh Pittsburgh. Um, I think it's .com, .org. Um, and also, what? Chilla. What's that? Where are we going Sorry. on Thursday? Where are we going? Oh, oh, I forgot to put that in there. Well, I don't think it's a public event. So um, but so we could be like, look what we're doing. So we're going to this event. <laughs> there you go. We're way cooler Car- than the rest of Car- you guys. Carnegie Mellon's ETC Entertainment Technology Center uh, down there in Technology Park. 
uh, they're going to have somebody from Indiegogo talking about crowdfunding. And actually, the uh, one of the founders of Indiegogo was on Triangulation Monday. Mm. Just listen to that today. Really good. Uh, talk, really good talk about uh, crowdfunding, financial dealing like reinventing the financial market and investing in everything uh from you know bottom up instead of top down and uh also i might be confusing that oh that remembers the other thing but um um but we're checking out and uh we're, we're going to be down there for that i think that's in uh, conjunction with the pittsburgh technology council mm -hmm. somehow we were allowed to sign up for our signups or something i might a secret member or something i don't know uh but we're going to show up and see if they, they turn us away uh but no I, it'll be really cool to check that out learn more about crowdfunding i have a failed crowdfunding Thing that i did uh i'd love to learn how to fix that for next time um and, and for, actually from what i heard from there like on the triangulation like uh i'm kind of more interested in what their platform might do for people that don't already have an audience than what kickstarter does since sound really intriguing and i hope to learn more there on thursday um what was the other thing i was going to say oh the hardware store did not make it with all the um, snow and stuff last week, but they still had their event, Let's Start an Incubator. And if you go to the hardware store, Work Hard BGH, PGH is their Twitter. You can start there. Go Get to their YouTube page, and uh, they have the entire presentation from that. Uh, once again, financial and business stuff that I don't understand, but it sounds really exciting. Um, but I listened to that yesterday. Uh, really cool that they're letting that video up there. Um, and it looked like the, that place was full. So <laughs> so they're getting a lot of people up there. Again, doing some really cool stuff up in Allentown. Um, Samsung is going to announce something on March 1st. They're claiming there's a there's a there's a pretty looking picture on there. So we have the World Mobile Congress coming up towards the end of the month. Um, Samsung, they're the picture on on the announcement invite looks much like the edge of the edge. <laughs> if you're familiar with the the Galaxy Note Edge or the Galaxy Edge, where it has like the touch panel along the side, okay, that like curved that screen cur thing going on, yeah, on the one side. That's kind of how they're. That's the line across the the poster. So I'm awesome. sure we'll be. I'm I'm guessing it's going to be the next Galaxy S6. Yeah, S6. So Katie may need to get a new phone soon. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I'll rotate it. Oh, it'll be on the iPhone 7, I'm sure. Um, other things going on around the network. I had the fortune to talk about trolling and the internet and bullying and kind of how to deal with that uh, with our friends over at Seclair. You can check that out at seclair.com or look up the Educational Grand Rounds on Twitter. Um, I think it was like, uh, the title was how, how to Deal with Trolling. Um, also, it's on the Sorgatron Media Master Feed to subscribe to that on YouTube, uh, so iTunes or Stitcher. Um, also, uh, this week, uh, like I said, I, I pitched, or I, I launched today the tech, what I call it, tech sec, um, which I'm, I'm kind of doing in the morning here, uh, something different, um, to kind of, I don't know, just to do something, you know, for a, a daily-ish kind of thing. I'm kind of deciding what to do, put that on the feed, but for right now, you can get that on YouTube on our, and awesome cast is the, uh, username on there, uh, so go subscribe to that and you'll get all of those. Also on the Sorgatron Media Master Feed as well. Uh, over at Sorgatron.com, I well, that's not the right one. Where did I put it? There it is. Um, the Good Morning Podcast continues. Uh, I would talk about workshopping some video today, uh, as well as I have a SpongeBob movie review, if you're interested in that. Uh, talked about some other video production we did over the last week. You know, as I do, you know, talking about my, uh, my recent uh, re- setting up of the uh, uh, Sighthound mm -hmm. security camera, do-it-yourself kind of thing. Um, I think I actually got a little bit of feedback on that. Was that you? Or was that somebody else? I think somebody else hit me up um, mm -hmm. about a camera they're using. So um, so go check it out. That's at Sorgatron.com. Chilla. I'm at Chilla on the Twitters. I'm... I don't even know what I'm... That's me! <laughs> Woo! We're not here. I'm on... <laughs> we're, we're not up there. We're down here. here. I'm sorry, audio <laughs> listeners. I'm so sorry. <laughs> AJ, the rest of you. And Dutters, you're at K Dutters on the Twitters. Yes. Down, Down there. there. <laughs> <Not here>. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, you can join us. We're here every Tuesday about 6 30, 7 p.m. We're getting started at live.awesomecast.net. You can please subscribe to us 
on your podcast providers and YouTube. All the links over at awesomecast.net. Follow us on awesomecast on the Twitters. Ooh, ooh, that, ooh, right, right, there, uh, right there, right there. Right there. Man. Terrible. There it is. There you, there you go. There, there you go. At, uh, awesome cast. Can you see it better? <laughs> awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com <laughs> if you want to email us your awesome things of the week. Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus. Look up awesomecast. A big thanks to Mike Allen. Mike Allen PR on the Twitters for helping with show notes and tweets all night long. I know we got some Lego fanatics jumped in the chat room there. That was nice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, So with that, thank you to our awesome chat room. Of course, Alex Cars, Hot Wheels contributing, everybody else hanging out on there. You're our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. If you like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred. Check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle. <laughs>